Hello again to all of you core believers. It's Club Corby for the 20th of May 2020. And on today's show, we're going to continue working on our cast poster. We've made some pretty good headway on it at this point, but there's still a bit of work. To do. So we won't waste any time. We'll just get right into it today. Uh, today we're going to start by. Uh, Doing some, I think, some pretty severe editing on uh, the start of Maxine, who I am really not happy with uh, the way that she's turned out here. So, in fact, I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and grab her model sheet. So, I'll try and uh, make sure that she is as close to her original design as possible as we. Uh, fix her up. So, this is Maxine's model sheet. Uh, I'm going to keep this open in a separate window. I'll just move that away. There we go. So it's still visible to me and, and my other monitor while uh, we chip away at this. I 
think the first thing we should do before we go any further is let's well first of all let's create a white backing layer so we can move some elements about because we're going to be shifting a lot of things as we go I imagine helps if you pick the right colour, there we go we'll start by moving away the character text there's no doubt we're gonna be messing about with uh, the main character art but we don't want to obscure that so we just are going to push that out of the way a little bit uh, Then we're going to start to work on the facial features, I think, because they're a little bit oversized. I think that's a big part of uh, the problem. The whole time that we've been working on the rest of this post, I keep looking at Maxine and think she just looks so off. And yeah, a big part of that is that the eyes. large but all the facial features are just a bit oversized but the eyes are most notable actually I think we could uh, size the right one up a little bit just so that we're even And as I've spoken about before, I do have a bad habit of throwing facial features a bit too sort of uh, in a way that makes everybody a bit too bug-eyed sometimes. And I think I've almost been overcompensating lately because if anything, I kind of ended up in the opposite situation where sometimes the facial features end up being too small. But that obviously wasn't the case here. And we might have to adjust the spacing a few times before we get it right. We'll just uh, point out the eyelashes just now, and we'll uh, make a point of coming back and adding those back in afterwards. As long as I don't forget, which I've done at least once or twice, don't let me forget. putting it on my to-do list. I'm going to extend the eyebrows out a little bit.
Oh, I think it's up a little bit. One thing I don't like is the way that one of the I the lower eyelids is sort of pushing inwards and the other one is well no they both are pushing inwards I shouldn't say that just uh, this was just a bit more messed up so okay again we can work on it I'm just gradually to find it and we'll get uh, both eyes to the point where a little bit more smooth out. Death smoothed it. Smooth death out, is what I'm trying to say. Just hang me. Hmm. I was going to say, we're just hitting the X button on the keyboard. It's a very useful shortcut to switch back and forth between white and black in this case. So basically, whatever your foreground and background color are. It's a real time saver. And it saves you having to go over to your toolbox every time and pick out white and black manually. Rather than actually erasing any part of the canvas. We're just filling it with, uh, with white to match the canvas. So it effectively acts, it acts like an eraser, but we're not actually erasing them. Filling it with, uh, filling the canvas with white instead. up with uh, one pupil much bigger than the other. So I think we'll reduce the other one a bit, and then hopefully we're going to end up about the same size. as well as the fact that one eyelid is slightly wider than the other so we kind of need to widen this one a bit just to 
down the side. Maybe we'll upturn this. At the end, just uh, add a little bit more symmetry. Also, if you look at the way that one eye cuts off, sort of terminates at the eyelid, and the other one doesn't really run into it the same way, so that also is a bit asymmetrical in that sense. She's starting to look a bit better. It really was just that thing that she was kind of bug-eyed. And that... Uh, you know, the facial features just were not... Uh, were oversized, I suppose, as, uh, relative to... the head to the face.
I'm really looking for a boy stand to have that uh, eyebrow just covered a bit more. Again, just to have the two of them match. Sometimes with eyebrows, it's actually better to have a bit of asymmetry and uh, like with Josie for example I actually just left that one eyebrow raised I can't remember if that was the original intent but uh, you, know, you can play around with those sorts of things or mouths are another thing where you can tilt the mouth or have the mouth sort of squint uh, in an asymmetrical fashion like with uh, Karen at the bottom there you can play about with that sort of thing, but uh, in this case, I think I'm gonna just try and keep these eyebrows balanced. sorts of ways that we can approach this but I would say the next thing that we need to sort really to this we should probably try and approach this from the perspective of fixing the biggest issues first and then anything else any smaller things that we have to handle you know, we can easily tackle afterwards but the biggest issue that I see now having fixed up the face is the fact that the, the shape of the hair is really uneven here. It's the usual thing really where it's much higher on one side than it is on the other. Uh, and my intuition is, uh, would suggest that uh, the best thing for us to do is lower the right side down so that it matches the left rather than having it uh, Buying into the top of Kirby's art at the top, or the bottom of Kirby's art at the top, I should say. So. I'll actually just uh, remove these two lowest, uh, the lowest down specs because the 
they just don't look at like any I kind of feel like I'm working a bit too hard on these three little, uh, or six little tufts of hair that are on the top of Maxine's head and it probably doesn't really matter that much. Oh, 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 
I might as well just design right over the outer lines of the outer frame. I don't know if the frame is the right word I'm looking for here. The outermost lines of Maxi's hair, I'm just going over them with a thick uh, G pen line there. And we'll just uh, trim off a little bit of the excess on the inside. and try to meld these uh, lines together. It took a bit of doing because they're going to end up a bit angular but yeah, we can chip away at it and find it a little bit yeah, that's still a bit too angular actually. I can deal with that. Okay.
Maybe I'll try to get these uh, bits of the hair that sort of swoop in to reflect the actual uh, original character design. So that they land in the right place. Uh, they almost sort of become the cheekbones in a way. doing is we're really just refining the edges of this line out and we're going to end up with a much cleaner piece than what we started with. I really think that Maxine was by far the weakest of these of all the designs on this page except for maybe well Morgan's face is a bit of a mess as well. The two of them both ended up uh, I have a lot of regrets about how they both turned out but it's okay we're gonna fix it. That's why we're here. So much of the process of doing this is, uh, you know, you start off with your pencil sketch, or at least in the, in the case of how this was done, you know, you start off with your pencil sketch and, you know, there may be issues that are inherent in the art there. And when you do the inking, you might connect them, but you also might introduce some new issues. Either, you know, uh, unintentionally, I mean, you might just add in more additional mistakes or without even realizing it, or, you know, a slip of the pen or something, or your ink runs. So many different ways at the inking stage that things can just go wrong. So you know, by the time we get to the point where we're revising the art as we are here, we're cleaning it up uh, and then colouring it. This is really our chance to. Identify those sort of glaring issues. There's also the factor of uh, of this art being a couple of months old now, and so it had time to sort of just sit, and we didn't do anything with it. And then you can come back to it. It's like I, I was saying that on, on a previous stream about how if you just leave a piece of art even for a couple of hours or a day or so and then you come back to it and you have a fresh set of eyes and you notice issues that you might not have before even more so if you're taking an old piece of art from months ago by the time you come back to it you're really going to spot 
uh, the problems with it. When I look at uh, previous issues of Corby, as I sometimes have to do just for for whatever reason, for continuity or whatever it is. You know, even go back to just say like issue 3 from last year. And already I'm sort of like uh, I look at the art that's in there and I feel like I could have done a better job of course at the time. I was running myself into the ground trying to just get it finished. But you know, when I look back at the art now, I feel like I could do a better job now. Even worse if we go back to, you know, that first issue in particular. I'm almost more forgiving with the first issue because that whole first issue was just a learning experience anyway. We're just trying to make everything work. But, you know, it never seems to... Uh, and at least in my experience, I mean, I've been at this for a long time now, and uh, you never stop looking back at your old stuff or even your relatively recent stuff and going, oh, I, I, you know, I see all the errors in it, and uh, I feel like I could go back and I could do a better job now. I think that's probably a good thing and it's probably indicative of uh, at least a degree of personal, you know, artistic growth. I mean, it might be the case that if you were to find yourself going back and looking at your older art and you didn't see any issues with it and there was nothing glaring about it that you would fix, that might be more of a warning sign than anything. That might be a sign that... Uh, you know, creatively, you've sort of stagnated and uh, you're not really looking to improve. Neither of these ears are even, by the way. This one's much lower down than the other one. Um, I think we should pull that up. sort of uh, spikes of hair that come up from behind the back of the head. Just get them to feel more like one chunk. I think that's I mean, that's going to match a little bit better on both sides. In actual fact, 
I like the connection between them. That went permanent. Just certainly much. Again, the slavish sort of uh, devotion to symmetry. I don't actually think that at this. You need to worry about that sort of thing to that degree. It's like a. Uh, yeah, you want the eyes to line up, or you want the ears to line up, but I don't know. But we really need these three spikes on either side of the head to be identical. And I don't know about you, but uh, I don't feel like the hair on the left side of my head perfectly lines up, you know, at all times. With the right. I might be asking a bit much. You try to find a good balance, well, I, I, know, I know that's something I've been bagging on about on every stream lately. The angle on those is a bit off as well, so. You kind of try to find a balance in two ways because you're trying to find a balance in the character art. You also need to try to find a balance in a more figurative sense between how much time am I going to spend on this and how much is just being ridiculously uh, fussy. That's gonna damage the uh, jawline, and I don't want to re redo that. That's how he alias gets left a bit of a mark on the page there. getting there. I think the only things we need to do now are just work on these sort of uh, the inner hair details and then we can move on and actually get started with the colouring. We've spent a lot of time today just on uh, this sort of the digital editing side of, uh, of the art rather than the colouring and I knew going in that we were going to end up high spend a fair amount of time today on Maxine because as I said uh, at the beginning of the show I wasn't I was not happy with the way that she turned out uh, at the ink stage and the whole time that we've been uh, working on all the other characters Maxine has been sort of the elephant in the room in terms of the one that I knew was going to be the biggest challenge in fixing
I actually do like these uh, thick black lines here. I think that what we should do is save that for when we add color to the image. Sometimes the decisions that you make in terms of uh, when you're inking something. At least this is my process. The decisions that I make when I'm inking something, a lot of them are going to be dependent on the intended purpose for the final image. And what I mean by that is that when I inked these characters initially, I didn't have any intention of colouring them, or I wasn't thinking about colouring any of them. That's why I did so much detailing on you, you, uh, rendering the shadows on Craven's head was because uh, I didn't think that I was going to end up actually going to be colouring any of this later. But here we are and we're doing it, so now sometimes I have to make adjustments. So. An example of that is having the shadow set uh, in black makes perfect sense if you're gonna just use pen and ink and not uh, color it later but I think it's gonna look better if we just uh, take some of this out Again, not all of the lines match up, not all of the points of the hair match up. So we have to make some corrections. Sometimes you could, uh, one way of setting a curve to uh, land the way that you want it to, at least this is a trick that I use, is I'll just put a little dot like that there and then just pull down and try and uh, hit the target.
and that is still a little bit off actually. That's actually pretty close to, uh, to the character model art in terms of the placement there where this uh, part of the hair is supposed to land. So. Sometimes you just aimlessly in control Z and uh, swiping away with your pen until you get uh, the stroke that you want and even then to refine it a little bit. of the fringe here on the lower part we need to get that middle for a while I was real scared of chunk as well
Okay, we'll, we'll do this, we'll just... Get rid of this, just there. Let's just do that on both sides. to make sure we get it just right because uh, it's not too big it just sort of hides in beneath the top and the bottom ones and with that Start to reconstruct this with the facial features. And I think that's it for the main head. <laughs> we still have a little bit of work to do in terms of fixing up the uniform, but there's really not that much to it, so this shouldn't take us very long. I'm actually going to bring this down a bit because... neck is a little bit longer than the original character model and the collar is noticeably smaller than this so I want to reduce it at least a bit. The collar is also a little bit asymmetrical here.
I don't think we're just very rapidly hitting X as we're going back and forth with the G pen to switch between white and black. That kind of uh, the rhythm almost becomes instinctive, really. When you really get going, you almost don't have to you know, look at which color you've got selected. You can just slip back and forth and, slip and uh, chip away at the art. It's just, uh, I mean, the step I've got in front of me just now is I'm using my right hand to hold my pen on my uh, Intuos tablet and my left finger is perched over, uh, is hovering over Control X and Control Z. I need to undo this control Z. Right, need to switch between white and black. It's just the X button. And Fairly quickly, we've managed to reconstruct Maxi's uniform. It's taken us much less time than they did to reconstruct her head. Okay, this shoulder's a lot more sort of squared off and is a lot higher than the other one. Yeah, also, the collar. So it comes down at an angle on this side. Yeah, sometimes I wonder why I don't just <laughs> redo everything from scratch. By the time we get to the end here, there's going to be a little, very little ground left on, certainly on Maxine. There's going to be very little left of the original image that's going to have gone untouched. We're going to have gone over everything with the pen. an image that we did in you know, ink on paper originally 
and we're gonna have the uh, we done it almost completely but then again as I said Lexi needed uh, a lot of work sort of scale. Would you like to work close up but I can go in afterwards and just uh, smooth that out. I say earlier. God, then. God, then the eyelashes. See, I didn't forget. I almost forgot, but I didn't forget. Okay. I think that's a lot better than where we started, anyway. Um, before we go any further, for the record, if I take off the white backing layer, we can see just how much uh, work we did to move some things around there. the line out with the backing layer. Okay, um, I'll just get started as far as uh, Yeah, colors goes. I prefer we do. I got this one more effects. Color on one side. bit thicker than on the other. Oh, no, no, no. Let's, let's, let's leave it there. Um, we'll go back up to the layer that I've just created for the skin. Before we go any further, uh, what I'm going to do is what I'm going to do is nothing because it's sort of recovering and it won't let me do anything. There we go. Right, we're back. Um, what I'm going to do is clean up a little bit of the excess there. Yeah, I think it's around the ears. Yeah, I'm just going to make sure 
that should be fine and then we can add in your hair after that yeah, in actual fact I don't need to go back up to the cover with this because I've got Maxine's model sheet in the other, mon in the other monitor in front of me so I can just pick the hair colour from there to start but that is very pale and I think that we're going to struggle to see that uh, and to pick out the areas that we may have missed. So, we'll add another layer behind that. And just pick any colour that we want. Let's see. Purple is going to be a good contrast. And that's going to help us temporarily to just. Uh, Spot any areas, you can see right away that there's going to be gaps in there. Yeah, Maxine's hair is a bit of a pain to colour because we've got all of these individual spikes. They all require a bit of care to make sure that we're, we've filled them all in. But also, she has... Uh, two colours in her hair, the fringe part at the front is eventually going to end up being pink and the back is going to retain this sort of, uh, this blonde colour
most important thing at this point is we make sure that all of these lines are, uh, connect and then we can use the fill bucket tool and save us a little bit of time at least so we're going to try and make sure as we go around the outline of the hair like this that we don't leave any gaps That should do it. And unless I've missed something, hit the fill bucket to up. Yep, there we go. Okay, again, noticing things as we go. This line is going to be filed down a little bit just so that but that's too much. I just need to, uh, to give this a little bit of hair trim. Okay so with that done select the hair and I'm going to add a, another layer on top of that make sure I'm actually on the correct active document now to the way that the character design was done originally, so... I reckon that's about in keeping with it. I just realised we forgot the colour in the eyebrows, so... Okay, we'll come back to that. That's the next thing that we'll do, we'll do the eyebrows. Uh, an easy mistake to make, I think. I don't think we're going to get much done beyond Maxine today. It would have been nice to be able to go on and get started with uh, another character and get two done today, but or at least get one done and one started. But 
I think uh, today is it's a vaccine stream. Do the uniform next, and then we can get started with the shading.
I'm going to use that backing where that would be for and actually move it down here so that I can add in the colour for Maxine's shirt as well. Good measure. Rather than add another layer on top of that, we'll just fill in this the trims of the blazer here as well. We need to go back Add a little bit to this. I wanna know you wanna feel how fast my heart would be if you were close to me. I wanna show you wanna let you loose inside my brain to see if you would run. Stay dangerous waiting for you. Dangerous waiting for you, my love. Dangerous waiting for you. It's a tiny little gap there. Also one here as well. I kind of feel like, uh... Okay, right, let's show the... Beautiful. I have a lot bit of time with this shoe. What we're gonna do we're gonna make one more connection before we start shooting. It's a relatively very one. We're gonna go in. I wanna know you the pull. This eye I wanna show you slightly wanna let you loose inside my brain to see if you'd run or stay
Well, that's slightly to the side, which of course means that we've also got to. Make allowances for. the surrounding area. That still lines up pretty well in there. Okay. We'll need to switch these layers off. And that backing layer is covering the gap that we've just made. So. We'll go merge visible layers. That's going to take a second. Then we're going to switch all of the color layers back on, and they look kind of funny. Uh, independent of the actual artwork. But anyway. And if you've watched previous streams, you likely know what comes next. So, with the exception of Craven, everybody else we've done by adding shadow on the right hand side. And Maxine will be no exception. Okay, we we moved a lot of the shading that was underneath the hair here. So we can start to put that back in just a little bit. Really, we don't need much more than that in terms of the, the face itself. For the hair, we're kind of going to manage it as two separate 
elements in terms of we have a layer that has the pink parts on and a layer that has the, the blonde parts. At least for today, that's how I've decided that we're going to do it. One thing I would say is that area that's behind the ear shouldn't be pink, it should be blonde, so that's actually an error. So we're going to have to go back and remove that. In teeny tiny details, but once I've spotted them, I can't just say I will leave it. I don't want to have that on my conscience because I know that that is technically incorrect. So this part here. And on the other side as well. Okay, where to is the one I'm looking for. I to switch all the layers on and off there because I haven't named them. A really disciplined artist would name all of the layers as they go so that Keep track. However, yeah, we only have so much time left on today's show, so I'm actually going to darken up this uh, shadow here just because the color that we start with is very light to begin with. So.
Having said that, I think that's a bit there. I don't want to go too dark with it. A little bit shading on the shirt collar. I, actually, I think that's a bit too much. Let's just turn that a little bit. Thing left to do in terms of flipping it ahead. You know, shading. Is let's uh, highlight the blazer. Room, kind of like two minutes about that. There really should be a lot of shading, I think, underneath. Shirt collar. I'm just going to add a few little embellishments here before we wrap up. For the day, maybe a little highlighting on there, and I might even I can keep track of which. Where is which? Let's 
this hat. I just think we are we'll put a little bit of highlighting across the edge of the hair. Just a tad. I'm not even going to do it on both sides, just really on this side. We could almost add uh, a little bit of white on the side of the hair as well, but the hair is so light that uh, the kind of effect that we get from it would be negligible, I suppose. So, um, no, I think we can leave it there. So what we'll do is Switch all of our other color layers off. Merge all of these. Switch that back on. And there we go. With that. That's when we're down and we have three characters remaining, which should line up pretty well. We still have two more sessions to go this week. We've got our, th our Thursday show and our Friday show. So, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for today anyway. Uh, I hope you've been enjoying the streams lately. Uh, I know this has kind of been... We've kind of been doing a repetitive sort of uh, schedule here in terms of we're just working the same piece every single day. Uh, we're kind of doing the same stuff. It's like editing and colouring and editing and colouring. So there hasn't been a whole lot of variety in terms of the content that we've been doing, I know. but. On the other hand, I feel like uh, that these uh, that this uh, project that we've been doing um, it's just very well suited to doing it just on streams like this as just something that we can focus on and uh, you know have here as part of the show while I uh, get things set up for uh, future projects behind the scenes as well. So. Do let me know if uh, this is something that you're enjoying and also let me know if you have any ideas for things that you'd like me to demonstrate on future streams in terms of what you're interested in, uh, in terms of making comics or what uh, what uh, aspects of the comic making process you know are you having trouble with that maybe you'd like me to, uh, to uh, demonstrate or suggest some solutions for. Or just if you like, if you have a favourite character from Kirby or something else that you'd like to see me develop on stream, or any kind of questions that you have at all, uh, then uh, yeah, feel free to. You can always leave a message in chat wherever you're watching this, if it's on Twitch or Periscope or YouTube, or drop me a line on social media. I'm really interested in getting your feedback on this. Um, just as, as, as the viewers, as uh, people who watch the show, I want to hear your input as well. Uh, but that is going to do it. Uh, as always, uh, if you want to support the show, the addresses are on the screen there. It's ko-fi.com forward slash Kirby or streamlabs.com forward slash Kevin Merck and Kirby. Uh, either way, and no matter how much you donate, it's all a great help. Uh, and with that, I think we're going to wrap it up there, and I hope to see you again on the next edition of Club Kirby tomorrow, uh, 2 p.m. UK time, the regular time. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it. Thank you for watching Club Kirby.